Hello everyone, my name is Tom Kayo Kulova. I'm an instructional designer as well as online instructor at the Empire State College. This week we are talking about universal design for learning and the three networks that come to play when we learn. In this video, we are going to uh, give, you more, give you more examples about how to apply effective network strategies in your, in your online learning. We are going to discuss how we can recruit interest of our students, how to motivate them to become interested in what we are trying to, what we're trying to teach them. We have with us Dr. Michelle Ford, who is an online instructor here at SUNY Empire State College as well. And um, we will discuss um, some, some strategies and some techniques that we do in our, in our courses. So maybe you can, you can get ideas if um, there is something that you can use, you can absolutely use the idea. Um, Dr. Ford, could you please introduce yourself? yourself? Sure, hi everyone. Um, my name, uh, as Tonka said, is Dr. Michelle Ford. Um, I teach entirely in the online modality now, and my uh, background is in the humanities and social work, and I teach in uh, human services, um, and I'll be speaking about human services courses with you today. All right, so let's talk about what strategies do you use to capture your students' interest in your courses? Yeah, so um, interestingly, I taught face-to-face -face for a number of years, more years than I've taught online, and this this topic of capturing students' interest uh, holds for both modalities. And then in the online modality, um, it's sort of especially exacerbated or heightened by um, the, the relative anonymity of the students, right, in, in this modality. So I do find myself thinking about this affective domain a lot. Um, I think I mentioned that I teach grief and loss courses. And so in that way, um, I'm fortunate because of the rather um, relatable or ubiquitous nature of, of those topics, right? It's something um, to which we all can, can or will um, um, uh, connect. So in that way, I use things like uh, the introduction of current events. Was there a celebrity death? How did social media respond to that celebrity's death? Um, I try to introduce um, um, elements of cognitive dissonance. So if we're sort of going along in a discussion and students are student comments are in support of a particular theory, I might, um, in the middle of a discussion, say, mm, actually, there are some, you know, some, some, counter, some counter theories. Um, everyone does not agree with XYZ author. What do you make of, of this? Um, and I also try to remind students, so because of, of this particular topic, um, I, I encourage students to balance not only their academic interest in the topic, so many are professionals in the human service field and they want to understand how to better help um, you know, their clients or a population with grief and loss, but also that it really does, that the course really does have some very deep running academic goals. And so when students can begin to balance the academic and the personal, and then the personal with the academic, I feel that they're really getting um, uh, some benefit out of it. Um, and, and they express that through a variety of learning activities, topics. Um, I encourage them to have a, a, you know, a range of presentation options, uh, et cetera. So really anything to energize the course in that way. Now, the topic that you teach on is perceived quite personal. And I'm assuming a lot of your students come to the class because of some personal experience yes. with the topic. How do you keep the course relevant to their professional goals maybe? Do you, what are your strategies? What do you use? I do, so, it, and it, that's also an interesting balance because um, I don't want to um, appear to be um, disrespectful of any of the personal stories they might be sharing. So in my, again, either course announcements or in my own participation in the discussion board because I really want to, and I do participate a lot in our discussion boards, I wanna, Sort of, um, you know, have that instructor presence, maintain, you know, instructor sub substantive engagement. Um, I remind them of the connections, not only to the course readings, but also to the, you know, perhaps their professional lives. Um, and I do so in hopefully a respectful way. Thank you so much for sharing that story. I recall from your introduction, you said that you were a nurse practitioner. You said you were a case manager. How does this then connect to your professional life? Can you think about a way that um, a particular reading can help all of us better understand this very common response to 
grief and loss, right? So it's sort of, again, it's a balancing act so that they can see themselves, um, it, it, you know, through, through an academic lens. They can, they can frame themselves as learners and really actively teaching themselves and teaching, um, teaching their peers in, in the class. It seems to be pretty, it's pretty effective. Great, thank you very much. You're I'm also thinking about um, the topic of your of your course and that it can get probably heavy at times mm -hmm. and uh, maybe more depressing than, than any other course yeah. because of the of the topic. I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. um, I'm wondering um, one of the one of the activities that I use is what I call emotional support, Paul, mm -hmm. which is um, I give students an option to take any of the concepts. I use concepts like hope, patient, mm -hmm. focus, interest, love, uh, persistence, and I, I create a poll activity where I let the student pick what they need that particular week, mm -hmm. and they can, they can they choose that, that particular concept and keep it with them, even though it's virtual, and even though it's really, I'm not really giving them hope, I'm not really giving them interest, just their thinking about something more uplifting and emotionally supporting might, might help guide them through, through maybe hard times in the course, in their lives. Mm -hmm. Can you, um, do you use anything like that in your courses? Can you see a use of anything like that in your courses? I, yeah, I do. Um, that and, um, uh, so to me, that's, um, it's, it's a pedag it's a sort of a pedagogical strategy, but it introduces a little bit of uh, self-regulation into the course too. So students can, again, imagine not just uh, maybe a particular trauma, you know, associated with the course or a particular client with which they've been working. By the way, we have a lot of uh, students working in hospice who are under a great deal of stress with respect to this particular topic. And so that, um, it's not quite cognitive dissonance, but it's a little bit of an emotional shift um, in the course. And it, and it reminds them, I think, of a larger um, context in which the course is being framed. I think it also supports um, the academic and the personal connections to the course and really nicely rounds out what could, um, you know, very quickly, I think, to your point, disintegrate into something rather um, that's sort of the opposite of resilience, right? And interestingly, a big piece, a big theme in this course is resilience and how human beings can off really often on a daily basis confront grief and loss and come through on, on the other side, as it were. And so that emotional support piece um, under, underscores that, the resiliency. Okay, wonderful. Thank you very much, Michelle, for, for all your advice. Works that are associated or that are, okay, let's start over. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I didn't know where I was going. My brain network was not associated. <laughs> oh, silly goose.